Welcome back, everybody. It's your time that up on the Edup Experience podcast, where we make what we make education your business. You knew I was going to say it. I've said it 630 times on this podcast, and I've said it here at Genzabar. Jam. Nice. 2023. I just downloaded that one thanks to Helen, who was nice. like, Why don't you get a sound effect that says Jam? Oh, she could have yeah. told me 20 episodes ago, <laughs> but no, we saved it for these guests, these special guests we have today uh, here at Genzabar Jam 2023, Orlando, Florida. The conference has been. It's been amazing. Fantastic. Uh, it's yeah. been fantastic. By, yeah. by the way, here on my left, uh, if you don't know the voice, he's the co-founder of the Edo Experience. Here we, here we go. Here we go. Yes. I love it. He asked for that. <laughs> Let's bring in our guests oh. one at a time. Here they are. Where are they? We have Karina Ganias. She is the, what is she? She's the VP of, no, she, that's, what do you do, Karina? <laughs> I am the vice president of marketing. I can't Where's believe my, you forgot that. Got, and you just said jam vice, was exciting. I was surprised Martin. you didn't say jam Where's was sheet? jamming. Jam was jamming. Yes, that's, that's a good right. one Jam too. is jamming. Oh, VP man. of marketing. Vice and president. Vice president. I, I knew this yeah. because my paper was sitting Not in the front of me. In front of me. <laughs> no one wanted to tell me to look at the paper in front of me. And my second guest today. Oh. We live, by the way, we leave in all of our yes, mistakes it's because awesome. it's organic. And we didn't want to tell you what to do. We exactly. thought you'd have a moment yeah, and you'd get through it. Thank you. I have done 20 you. of these just for the record. And Omar Riaz, he's VP of Strategy and Innovation at Genzabar. Guys, welcome to the microphone. How are you? We're jamming. Are you? <laughs> We're jamming. J -j -j Jam. Exactly. We are having a great time meeting all our customers and... Uh, you know, just uh, meeting colleagues from Genzabar and uh, excited to be here. Nice. Well, let's start here and we can go to either one of you. How does this get planned? All right. You scope this out every year. How, when do you start the planning? Who's involved in the planning? How does this come together? Well, Omar's looking at me because that would definitely be a question that I would answer. So Jam is run, starts from the marketing department. But we, when we look at locations, we, we want Jam is about community, right? So we're looking at locations that bring people together. What better place than Orlando, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. um, the the, the Gaylord it. Palms is, yeah. is just the place to be for that. People love to come to Disney, right? And when oh, you yeah. come down to Orlando and Disney, you just feel love. You feel all the feels, and that's mm -hmm. just what Jam is. Uh, it's an annual process. We start planning for Jam right when the night, right? Mm. So... We get back, we're already thinking about, we debrief, we say what's worked, we get feedback, we survey them, we say how, what more can we bring you, how can we make it more valuable, and we start planning for next year. I already have loads of areas that I'm already <laughs> thinking about for next year that I won't get into now, but it is definitely a year-long process, but it is a fun process. It is company-wide, it is not just for marketing. Omer here also plays a big role, but it's also our customers. Our customers are involved. They're doing sessions. They're doing panels. They're connecting together while they're here. They're just as involved in the entire process. Cool. Omer, uh, what about the tech part of this, right? Because clients will come, they'll talk to you, they'll say what we need, what's going well, what's not going well. And sometimes you get the truth, right? <laughs> handle the truth <laughs> but you have to because you have to you have to make the products better you have to innovate absolutely so um you know one of the things we get uh, of course is is feedback on what's working what isn't with the current product but what uh, in addition we also get some really valuable feedback on what are innovation uh ideas and areas where we can uh, bring in new solutions to the market that nobody else uh has today epic uh, and that's really exciting for me. That's what <laughs> keeps me coming back every year. Um, Karina, over to you. Um, Am I going to get an epic? Oh, you'll get, you'll okay, get, you're going to get things. I, you're gonna hope get I, do. Or I, got, I got stuff planned. Don't All worry. right. Thank you. Appreciate um, that. <laughs> what has gone well of all the things that could go well? Because I think there's lots gone well. And oh, you yeah. said you have a lot that you would like to review. But what do you good to walk away with and go, you know what? This is the one thing. This is my main takeaway. This is what went so well. But beat my expectations. Well, you're asking me for one. That's impossible. So I'm going to answer you well, with you two. Can do whatever you want. I'm yeah. going to answer you with two. So the first thing is just rapport and relationship building, right? You could talk about technology. You could talk about learning. You could talk about connecting. But these in-person rapport relationships, these conversations you're having when you see someone and you walk down a hall and you say, hey, hey, so-and-so, I haven't seen you in a year. 
these are these moments. And then you end up getting into conversations that you can take back with you to campus, mm -hmm. right? Those are those off the cuff conversations that you can't, that you can't replace. That's a fact. That's a fact. Can, That's I, a fact. can yeah. I say one more? I like that one. Jeez, That's a fact. I like that fact. <laughs> so I led along with some of my peers, a woman in leadership conversation today. Um, awesome. So everyone was invited from Genzabar employees to our customers, to our partners and our entire network. And that was one of the most enjoyable things I've done. I've nice. been looking forward to it all this week. And we were talking about, you know, what have been the challenges? What have them been the best practices? But we helped create conversations for them to talk to each other. That was the goal. And we had 50 minutes. And when we left, they said, can we have two hours? Can we have three hours? Can we make this into a social hour? Can we make this into a virtual quarterly meeting? Wow. And so that was one of the things for me, not just professionally, but personally, that it was, you know, one of my, my favorite parts of this week. Amazing. Yeah. Did you have, you know, since this is like planning a wedding, these things, right? Because you want everything to go perfect. Did you ever have a moment where you're like, okay, wait a second. Um, maybe isn't everything isn't going exactly like I planned and execute order 66. <laughs> and you had to get in there and just get over the things that aren't going wrong and remember that the relationships are unaffected by these things going on in the background, right? Oh, always, always. So you plan as best as you can, right? And there's always something that you troubleshoot but you expect for something to come up and it's how you handle it, right? right? And and you have perspective Nailed on it. it. You say, can I fix this? How can I improve this? But exactly right. You focus on, well, I'm still able to connect here, connect there, you know, and um, that's how you do the best you can and then you troubleshoot when something comes up. Epic. I told you you're gonna get an epic. Omer, what, what's next? What do you, okay, so one, two things. Karina did two, you can do two, two. Two, two? That's only fair. That's only fair, right? You can do two, two. Two, two. Um, what are the takeaways for you from an innovation standpoint? You walk back into the office, you go, you know, we got to get on these things. Or, yeah. or here are the things that we are getting on. So the biggest uh, item in that category is a session we had today around generative AI mm. and chat GPT. Yeah. And this is a really uh, polarizing topic in higher education right now. It is going to revolutionize how we educate and how institutions, what role institutions and uh, professors play in education. And so we had a conversation about that with a number of institutional uh, leaders today and got uh, all sorts of feedback from we should ban it to wow. it's a co-pilot uh, that uh, helps students be more efficient to how can administrators at a university uh, use it to be uh, you know, to cut down on their workload and to cut out tasks that don't really require human intervention. So um, it's a it's a brand new frontier that nobody has all the answers to. And um, I came away thinking like, this is a real opportunity for Genzabar to to lead this conversation and, and shape the policy mm. uh, around this. So really yeah, I excited. wonder what's the reaction from a, a innovation standpoint when somebody in a crowd says to ban AI? Yikes! Oh. You're a technology company. You can't, you can, it doesn't work, no. right? It doesn't work. And, and I think it's not realistic um, yeah. for, for any college or university because uh, it's already out there. Students are already using it. Um, and um, just like the internet, right? We went from researching books and libraries by photocopying them to looking up things on the internet. This is another, you know, the overhead wise. projector. <laughs> Remember the overhead projector? The calculator. Look at the screen, everybody, mm -hmm. right? I mean, the calculator, yeah. I mean, the cell phone with a calculator, <laughs> yeah, yeah. right? You, uh, can't, you uh, can't stop. Absolutely. And, and it, you know, we're at the cusp of this major change, which is going to not only change how we learn, but what we learn, what jobs will be in demand in the future. So many of those jobs don't even exist today, yeah. right? So um, I think it would be a mistake to to write it off or try to ban it or... or um, not have your students use it. Live in the now! You gotta accept technology yes. that's in front of you, right? Speaking of accepting things, moving them forward, Karina, you, you're VP of marketing, you've gotta put the message out about Genzabar. One thing that I know from all the interviews that I did, by the way, thank you for bringing us here yes, and allowing us you. to of course, have these thank conversations. Thank you for coming. Awesome. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that Elvin and I were talking 
one of the most significant things for us was be able to talk to some of the leaders at very small institutions, yes. religiously affiliated, tribal colleges. Mm -hmm. Amazing. Right. Who's interviewing these people? Well, nobody really gets to interview these people. They don't give everybody a chance. You know, you look at podcasts or articles, you, know, you get the same people oh, kind of yeah. saying the same things mm -hmm. over and over. And then you get somebody on who comes and brings a new perspective. We are, per, we were just feel very lucky to be able to have those perspectives. How do you take that 240 clients over 25 year loyalty and push that out to people who are looking Insane. for new technology partners, yeah. right? That's a big, big goal. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to answer that a, a few ways. Again, I'm going to go a couple, couple of routes. So you touched upon something. Oftentimes when we talk about higher ed education, right? And in the industry, a lot of times people talk about it from a national perspective, right? When you talk to some of these schools that are very localized, they have a very specific student body, potential students that they're, they're looking to recruit. So you asked me, how do I get it out there? Well, you need to talk about what are these institutions doing for their prospective and their current students. And that might be a different story than the national story, right? So when nationally we're talking about things like the value of education, we're talking about affordability, all of those mean something to each college, but they might mean something different, right? Nailed it. So each story, getting their story out and saying, what are you doing? What are the outcomes? And how are you moving the needle to your student body, whether that be locally, regionally, or nationally, or internationally? It, uh, uh, just to double down on that, also that value of higher education conversation may not be in question in some of those communities right now. You knew yeah. Tribal colleges is a really good example because they talk about um, the, the leaders that we interviewed talk about the inv invisibility factor that Native Americans feel in this country and how getting that degree gives yeah. visibility to their community. So there is not a question of value. And so you're right. We all we like to group things together. So students get grouped together institutions get grouped together, but there's a very big difference between the school that we interviewed in North Dakota and Harvard and, you know, an adult student in their 80s, uh, 70s to the 18 year old entering college. That's important to delineate or at least qualify who we're talking to and what we're talking about, right? Correct. And you're absolutely right. The tribal colleges, we have a one customer, every student leaves debt free. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Right. So they have a different purpose, a different mission, and they're mm -hmm. talking about things in a different, unique way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Strategy. What's the strategy as dun, we move dun, forward? Dun. Yeah. <laughs> that was my that was my organic noise. <laughs> Shoot, I wasn't ready. Man, wasn't ready. the pressure's on, Joseph. What's the strategy? What's the growth path? What's the strategy? What's it look like? Um, so, you know, the higher education is evolving to serve the needs of the market, and the needs of the market. Uh, I know we've talked about. You know, you can't group uh, things together, but there are some some trends that are happening, yes. and those trends have to do with uh, shorter time to value for the degree uh, to be able to stack different credentials together to create a degree. And, um, you know, higher education institutions are going to, uh, some have already started adapting, some will need to adapt. And so our strategy is to be the leader helping them uh, adapt, provide a playbook and the technology uh, and the change management tools to be able to move towards that future. Uh, and to continue to serve their students where they are at. You know, I want to say real quick, Joe, before we jump in, one thing that um, I have noticed, and I'm sure you have too, Joe, is that everyone we've uh, spoken to, they said that enrollment is up, which I just amazing. think like, oh, Exactly. I was just going to say that. Mm -hmm. I think that's amazing. And I think it's a testament to uh, Genzibar, maybe, and the relationship that you have with them. So it's very impressive to see that. Um, so kudos to, to you and the team everyone else. Thank you. And and everything Omar just said, it, we're outcomes driven. Yeah. We don't want to do things so someone could say, hey, I have this cool technology. What is this about? It's ah. about enrollments, but not just for the institution, for the student. We want them to come. We want them to be happy. We want them to be engaged. We want their mental health to be strong. We want them to graduate, but then we want them to be successful for their job. So when we're working strategically with our customers, it's all about outcomes. Yeah. Omer, uh, over to you. On a scale of one to 10 and why, how did this conference meet your expectations? Oh, uh, or did it meet your expectations? On a scale <laughs> of one to, I'm not even sure how to ask that. Is it? <laughs> Omar, answer this right. Answer this right. <laughs> dun, dun, if Karina dun, was dun, not here, air muffs, my air muffs are on. <laughs> <laughs> Is 10.5 an option? <laughs> yeah. no, I don't think so. <laughs> uh, well done, sir. Well done. So, uh, you know, especially in, in, 
today's world where you don't get as much face time uh, a lot of times yeah. you know business travel is not as prevalent mm -hmm. um you know it's really important to get in front of customers and have that um person to person interaction and and that has been the biggest uh takeaway for me for, at this conference those conversations have been really valuable uh the other part of it is partners so um we have a large partnership program uh third parties that help us put together just the right solution uh, for our customers uh, a lot of the solutions we bring but there are partners that uh, fill in some of those gaps and uh, having those partners here in person and discussing ideas for how do we innovate together has been really valuable for me. Uh, yeah, most you know, importantly, I'm looking forward to the party tonight. That's, yeah. that's the point five. I, I didn't have my cheers button ready, I was but say I have cheers. one. Uh, one of the things uh, that stands out to me, um, and I can't remember who it was. She was sitting right where you are, Karina. Oh, man. But 20 people from her institution. Yes. Came. Dillard? No. No, it was a different one. Yes. That was amazing. So 20 people. 20 from the institution. And I'm going schools That's i've worked awesome. in higher ed for like 22 years schools don't send 20 people to uh, conference. a yeah. conference why because cost two because you're worried your employees might leave <laughs> so i'm thinking to myself for that institution to invest in 20 people the confidence they have in the relationship with Genzabar is just i mean it's out of this world because they're doubling tripling quadrupling yeah. down on on people visiting here i've never heard of an institution send 20 people never. to a no conference what does that mean to you I'll I'll take that. So it does. It means once again the importance of the relationship and the rapport. But what it also means is higher ed becoming less siloed, right? Mm. So these are twenty coming from across their institution. This isn't just an jam. Is not an IT conference. Yeah. It's a conference for everyone across the institution, whether they're in IT, enrollment, business office, financial aid, HR, and so on. So if you think about it. 20 it's great group but it makes sense yeah. right because yeah. we want people coming together how is this institution not just leveraging technology but hearing best practices and bringing them back together as a unit and making them less siloed yeah. karina if you could give one word to sum up uh, your jam experience would it be this yeah <laughs> I, I had to get without a doubt i'll add inspiring right <laughs> on a scale, same question <laughs> on a scale of one to ten how because you're the you're the planner right you're the overseer how did this meet your expectations? Did it meet your expectations? It exceeded. It exceeded. I'm going to go with 11 it, 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 because Omar said 10.5. So I'll have to top him and say 11. Since you brought us here, I'm not going to hit the button that says, I don't think that you can give that score. You can give any score you want here on the End of Experience podcast. Anything that you want to say about your teams and your staff that help you put this together? Uh, you know, we're really thankful to have a, a group of employees that are like family and Everybody mm. cares about the company's mission and goes above and beyond to uh, to make this event a success. So it, it wouldn't be a 10.5 or 11 uh, <laughs> without the efforts of, of all our teams. And uh, I'm really thankful to them for, for all they do. Completely agree with Omer. It's, it's just what we're talking about with connections and collaboration. Omer, myself, our teams work together. Our entire leadership group and their teams work together. It is very rewarding when you're coming together along with your customers and your partners and your network and you put all of this work in, again, to, to fulfill that outcome that you set. But have fun while we do mm -hmm. it. I mean, how fun is this? This yeah. is this is the J best jam. part. <laughs> we love it. We loved being here. I will tell you guys, we loved it. We loved the conversations that we had, the energy. Uh, it's most fun when the, 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 the plenaries get out and all the people are oh, running yeah, by at the awesome. same time yeah. as we're recording. It's just that there's a lot of buzz in the air. We appreciate you having us here. Uh, any final words about Jens Bar, Omer? Uh, I'm excited for the future of education and the role that Jens Bar is going to play in it. We're mm -hmm. going to be uh, a, a way shower, uh, a leader in, in the space, and uh, as we are today, but in this new world with unbundled education, generative AI, and I'm really excited for it. I just want to say I, I agree with that because, you know, I've been working in higher ed over 20 years and a whole bunch time. of conferences and all that. <gasps> He's old. Time. And I was telling Joe that the other day. I said, this, this is going to grow. He said grow that this morning. Yeah, I said it. They're they're gonna, gonna, they're you gonna, gonna, gonna tell. And the culture uh, is beautiful because a lot of the uh, language is family. You know, I think you said that correct. I don't know, Omar, oh, family, we're family. And it's a partners working together and the customers. And, um, 
it's beautiful to see that you know you have that culture and you guys have fun and you enjoy what you do and it's wonderful and people saying hi to each other and they haven't been together for years and and so it's very impressive so i, I can definitely see that you're going to grow and i'm excited i'm very excited to to watch you and see what happens final 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 word well, to karina Thank you for sharing that because you just, man, are you on my marketing team? <laughs> not yet. No, I'm just you, you know, and we're, we're in it. It's happening. Yeah. We're not going to grow. We're, we're growing. We're number one. We're the leading vendor, partner, family member mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. our industry. Yeah. This is just the beginning for us. You could tell. And I wouldn't yeah. be doing my job as a marker if I can't flip flip the switch here i mean oh, am i allowed yeah. to ask you all some questions right? oh yeah go i suppose how would you in one word describe jam and jen's of you you do a lot of these one things word. you've talked to a lot of people in our industry what stood out for you da, da, da. you know what I, i'll go first i think that one word because i've heard it over and over again is it, family i and i'm i'm just coming here for the first time and i'm, I'm experiencing this I'm, I'm meeting so many people from jenza bar and then so many people from the different schools the tribal schools are amazing the stories were just amazing it's so fantastic to hear these stories and i've learned so much too from listening to the podcast and so uh this sense of family and camaraderie between jenza bar people and then uh, between jenza bar and their partners and, and clients customers and so I, I think the one word would be family. I, I'm really uh, uh, very happy that you have that part of your, as part of your culture. So that's very cool. Thank you. That 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 means a lot. We're proud of that, and and that's definitely us. For me, I, I would say enlightening, enlightening, for a couple of reasons. One, in in Jeff uh, Elliot was a co-host a couple of times, and he gave those stats: two hundred forty yeah. partners over twenty five yes. years or more, and I think forty over thirty years, or I don't know, I don't remember the exact stats. Forty two over forty. Yeah, it's like mind blowing when Absolutely. you think about that. It's enlightening. No, I would say the greater higher ed community doesn't know those things, and when you, when it, and you put that into context, the first thing I thought is. Why can't I have that relationship? <laughs> I, honestly, yeah. when you think about that from an institutional standpoint, what that says about the longevity, about the innovation of the organization, its sustainability, I mean, there's just a lot there to get to 25 years because higher ed shops every couple of years. You shop SISs, you shop CRMs, and if you keep going back to the same one, boy, doesn't that tell a story that needs to be told. Uh, because typically, I mean, migrations are really hard, but mm -hmm. you pull the plug when something's not working. So if it is working and you, it has the ability to continue to grow because you can't be with a stale system, then, I mean, it just says a lot about the community and the people, of course, everybody we met was outstanding by far. Uh, by far. And Helen over here organized us to a T. Mm -hmm. She had us rocking and rolling the whole time. We hope we delivered for you here, uh, you guys. We It was an absolute pleasure to be here. I feel like I am on the receiving end now. She turned it around. Now I don't there know what to go. say. I threw, I, you, I off. To be I the threw host. you off. That was my goal. <laughs> I had to be the host. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> well, we appreciate you. Um, I don't think I gave you the final, final, final word. I think you turned it back on me, but last word goes to you, Karina. Yes. Thank you for being here. This is exciting. Again, I'll leave you with community, family, mission of higher education that's why we do what we do ladies and gentlemen you can check out jenza bar anytime anywhere they are not hard to find there are lots of happy happy people using this system i know because i talked about 1500 of them <laughs> or so as they walked by here are our guests i'm going to get it right this time ladies and gentlemen karina ganya she's vp of marketing and omar he has vp of strategy and innovation at jenza bar J J J J J J yes. did you guys have a good time in the podcast today? i had so much fun loved it ladies and gentlemen you've just ed upped, upped.